da 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 Next, I want to uh, I want to move to the other side of the U.S. I want to move all the way from Detroit, for where is in the kind of at the top there, and I want to go all the way across to the very very front, where you can see the very front on the left side of the map, San Francisco. So why am I talking about San Francisco? Well, it's because that is my hometown. It's where I was born. I wasn't born in Detroit. Yeah, I know, my name is Jack Detroit, but I wasn't born in Detroit. I just lived there. I was born in San Francisco. So you might be wondering, hey, why did your parents name you after a city? I don't know. So I want to talk a little bit about Detroit. Uh, San Francisco, sorry. So San Francisco. Uh, so San Francisco, uh, I grew up there. And when I was growing up there, it was a very multicultural, very international city. And also a city with a lot of history. And this was before there was Silicon Valley and before there were there was social media and before there was uh, Apple computers and Google and all of that. It's way and, and Tesla and Elon Musk, all of that is way before that. So it's a very, very different, very artsy uh, uh, city. So a lot of music, a lot of art, a lot of theater uh, and a lot of movies. Star Wars was made here. So it's got this, and it's got a very rich culture to it, uh, and then with the arrival of Silicon Valley, a lot of that's changed. My memories of San Francisco is, uh, for example, um, on Christmas Eve, my family didn't do what many families do. Many families have their own customs, but my family, we always got Chinese food takeout. And San Francisco Chinese food is authentic Chinese food. In other parts of America, there's American Chinese food. It's not real Chinese food. It's American Chinese food. But except in San Francisco, in San Francisco, it's Chinese Chinese food. The real thing. You know, that would be our uh, Christmas Eve. Our dinner was just take out Chinese food. Uh, and um, uh, uh, in the summer... We would go uh, take the bus and go see a baseball game because uh, at the time, baseball tickets were kind of cheap. And we'd see football games and we would freeze because uh, in the fall, uh, it was really, really, really cold at night. It was super, super cold at night. Uh, it's kind of different now, unfortunately. But I, but my, my early memories of San Francisco is just a really, really cold city. San Francisco is kind of a mysterious city. Because there's fog, and the fog at night hides things and makes things quiet. So it's a very mysterious city sometimes. While we're talking about San Francisco, I'm going to share some, some facts about San Francisco. Real true facts. So California, the state, is where San Francisco is. And the flag, the flag for California... Uh, shows a picture of California with stars, and it also has a big bear. And the model for the bear was was real. There was a real bear that was the, the example that they drew and put on the flag. And that bear lived in San Francisco in the San Francisco Zoo. Now, it's kind of a sad story. This bear, his name was Monarch because he was the king of all bears. And what's really sad is actually, he was the, he was the only bear. Um, he was part of a, a, a bear called a grizzly, but a, but a special kind of grizzly, the biggest one. Uh, these grizzly bears were the biggest bears in North America. And unfortunately, uh, we hunted them until there were no more. They became extinct and Monarch was the very last one. And when he died, they were all gone forever. Uh, the Great Depression. The whole world suffered during the Great Depression. A lot of jobs were lost. A lot of e economies really suffered terribly. Except for San Francisco. It was kind of crazy. In, in, in a way, actually, San Francisco boomed economically. 
during the Great Depression. Um, it was a time when radio dramas became really popular. Um, it, even though there was Hollywood making movies, a lot of people started making movies in San Francisco. Literature exploded during the Great Depression. Art was was supported and, and paid for. If you were an artist, you could get work in San Francisco. Impossible in other places in America. As a result of all of this uh, uh, of this success, San Francisco and California had the money to build not only one bridge, but two bridges, and not just two bridges, but have a world fair in it. So the Golden Gate Bridge and the Bay Bridge and the World's Fair were all hosted in San Francisco and made during uh, the Great Depression. So there you go. Uh, so everybody likes to wear good jeans. Jeans are cool. Jeans are a very American, right? Well, jeans were invented in San Francisco. So short story, short story. Uh, 150 years ago, there was a gold rush. Gold was discovered in California. So San Francisco was the place where people came to begin their journey to find gold. And there was a man who um, he made uh, uh, equipment for the miners, for the people who went to find the gold in the mountains of California. <clears throat> um, but but he also uh, would sometimes uh, be asked to use the materials using used for camping and for tents and that kind of thing uh, to to help the miners who couldn't do their shopping for new clothes. So he would just make really really strong clothes for these miners out of the same material that the, that was used for the camping equipment. And and then after the gold rush died out and and uh, better materials were were invented for tents and whatnot, um, th this guy who who uh, had this business with all this material uh, realized, wait a minute, I'm I'm I made clothes with this fabric that works really really well. I'm just gonna keep doing that, and and it seems to be really popular. And it was kind of like the style for San Francisco the style for California. And like, if you're a California person, you wore Levi's jeans. And then eventually, the rest of the world realized they were very cool. So they started doing that too. Next, Chinese fortune cookies. You know, fortune cookies, the little, the little cracker that you get at the, uh, when you eat Chinese food in America, and you open it up, and there's a message inside, or some wise words or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, the, the point is... Um, uh, these fortune cookies, uh, we call them Chinese fortune cookies because every Chinese restaurant sells them. And guess what? They're not Chinese. They're not. They were invented by a Japanese American uh, who who wanted to kind of, you know, uh, make treats uh, for his customers in his Japanese restaurant. And, uh, and they became so popular that the cookie company that helped uh, him make these fortune cookies, uh, the other Japanese restaurants would, would imitate him. And then during World War II, World War II, unfortunately, the American government did a terrible, terrible thing. They took all of the Japanese-looking people and put them into prison. Really bad, really bad. They should not have done that, but they did it. And the Chinese restaurant owners took over the Japanese restaurants and uh, thought, hey, wait a minute, they're, they're you know, using these, uh, these fortune cookie things. So that's, a, that's kind of a great uh, thing. So we'll just steal that. And ever since then... Chinese restaurants uh, would just, you know, use the fortune cookie idea. And after, you know, a hundred years, now we just assume they're Chinese. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Last trivia about the Golden Gate Bridge, okay? Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is this weird orange-red color, right? Yeah. Um, it's not gold, Actually, it'd be a really dumb idea to paint the Golden Gate Bridge gold. And it's not ca called the Golden Gate Bridge because of the bridge. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge because of the area. 
the area where it is is called the Golden Gate, uh, the place where people come to find their gold. Um, but the bridge itself is just a regular bridge, and it's painted this weird orange color. That's because in in those days, you know, a hundred years ago, when the bridge was being made, we didn't have a good way to protect the metal from the the fog. In the the wet air of the sea, uh, if we didn't do that, then the then the the bridge would get all rusted and would fall apart and break. Right, so we needed a special material, a special paint to protect the metal, and unfortunately, that special paint was only one color. It was this orange color, weird orange color, and then uh, eventually, eventually, all paint could be used to protect metal. There's no limit to the colors. But by then, people got used to the color. And so in uh, every few years, when we had to paint the bridge again, because, you know, paint, paint comes off, you know, uh, we just kind of kept it the same color. We didn't change it because people got used to it. Now, we could paint it any color we wanted, but nope, just kept it the same color.